Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zeus Caravalli from ZK Research, and I'm here in Austin at COTA, the Circuit of the Americas, for the Grand Prix this weekend. I'm with Katie Siegel uh, from AWS. Um, and uh, uh, a quick intro on you, something. Like, uh, you gave us a great presentation this morning, but I'm not sure, we're sure what your title was. Absolutely. So, hi, everybody. Kaylee Siegel. I am the global lead for AWSI Digital Innovation. What that essentially means is I'm a professional brainstormer with Amazon's toolbox, and oh. I go into all types of companies, help them think bigger, build faster. But for me personally, I am a uh, motorcycle rider, racer, car racer. I love, I'm totally enthralled with the entire process yeah. and system. So a teeny bit of my real job is being a um, ambassador for the AWS and Formula One partnership. And like me, you're a cyclist as well. Yeah, so absolutely. Cool. Anything with wheels. Yeah, anything yeah. with wheels. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, F1 and uh, AWS is a global partner absolutely. to F1. What does that mean? So essentially what that means is since 2018, we've been F1's global uh, uh, cloud provider of choice. And um, we work with them across a number of different um, domains to be able to support their infrastructure as a modern digital business. Everything from what's going on with broadcast to things that support their apps, et cetera. But it really just means that we work together in a strategic way across a number of different different spaces. Yeah, now in the, in the presentation you gave this morning to the press and a number of customers, um, you went through some the number of data points that you're collecting yeah. from F1, and I always knew F1, and I think everybody would conceptually understand it's maybe the most data-driven sport, um, but talk about the magnitude of that, because the numbers you were throwing around are it's, huge. It's next level. Yeah. Um, so, you know, on any given day, on any given track, the race cars themselves have about uh, 300 sensors on board. And those sensors are telling everything, you know, as it relates to the telemetry data, what's the speed, what's the position, what's the brake pressure, temperature, et cetera. Now, you take those 300 sensors and you extrapolate it, and it's actually 1.1 million data points per second. Per, per second. Per second, <laughs> per car times 20 cars. And so uh, I'm not that good at math, yeah. but that's all, that is a lot of data. I think that's known as a gigawatts or something <laughs> Giga, like that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Now, uh, all that data is processed in the AWS cloud. Absolutely. And across all your sports partnerships, golf, basketball now, football, it seems just, I don't know, five years ago, they were all doing it on-prem. Yeah. But they've all seemed to have bought religion into cloud. Um, and what was the real aha moment where they're now trusting that, um, it, it, you know, the, I think the concept that you're going to get too much latency, the, it's no longer there, right? No, absolutely. And, yeah. and, you know, we're actually able to process the data with millisecond latency and go from wherever we are at the race in the world. And, to, you know, today we're in Austin, but tomorrow we could be in um, Baku and the next day we could be in Singapore. And we still are able to achieve millisecond latency from our racetrack and then the event technical center, which is sort of a, a pop up shop of all the different IT and transfer systems to get that data up into the cloud and then over to Big and Hill, which is the headquarters yeah. of Formula One, so that they can process the data and then push it yeah. back out to the worldwide feed. And I guess trying to stand up its own private cloud in every one of these cities every week would just be impossible. You could try. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't recommend yeah. it. Yeah. Your, your mileage may vary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, that's what they used to do, so. Absolutely, yeah. you know, and, and at the time it worked. And what we were able to show over the course of time is that uh, the latency is uh, millisecond, and so it's gonna be faster. Uh, the pricing is lower. Uh, the reliability is unbelievable with the amount of uptime that we're able to have and the redundancies of the regions. And then and then last, I'd say, you know, is like the, the data is ever increasing. And so 1.1 million data points per second five years ago, you know, but we've been doing that for a while now. And to be able to mine that historic data, I like to talk a lot about the caliber and the velocity of F1's data foundation really is unmatched. We have the first stopwatch data point from, you know, 1950 in Silverstone all the way through to, you know, data we're gathering right now yeah. in Austin. Stopwatch data points. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've evolved a little bit since. Now, um, uh, since then, and uh, so this morning you talked about the F1 insights, yeah. uh, all these data points you're, you've, well, that all the data points you're collecting, you're turning into insights. Yeah. And it reminds me a lot of the match facts you have with Bundesliga football, yeah. Yeah. all the stuff you're doing with PGA Tour and the football. So talk about some of the more, I don't expect you to go through all of them because there's a yeah. lot of them, but some of the more interesting insights that you provide in F1. 
Yeah, absolutely. So you th can think of our F1 Insights are essentially a uh, portfolio of digital products that are built on top of that data that serve different needs. So we will have great insights that will allow us to have our uh, close to the wall and be able to precisely measure and infer exactly how I close. I mean, you're giving millimeters, right? Absolutely. Yeah. How close without going over mm -hmm. or is that driver to the wall and, and why is it going to matter? But similarly, we're able to really understand, you know, what's happening with this pit strategy battle. Will an overcut or an undercut happen based on their strategy? What's the percentage at interest and eyeballs to that storytelling? And those are the F1 insights that you might see, you know, in broadcast. But there are also ones that will serve uh, race engineers and drivers. And then similarly, uh, though not classified as an F1 insight, you know, across the board, it's decision support for fans, for racers, and then we also uh, help build products uh, for the IT side of the house to be able to troubleshoot faster and go from there. Yeah, I thought it was interesting when you were showing the pit, uh, the pit stop, and typically at F1 you only do one or two, yeah. unlike NASCAR where there's a lot more common, but you were actually able to predict that there's an 82% chance that if, you know, Max Verstappen pits now, he may yeah. get taken over, uh, you know, by Lando Norris, something like that, and, yep. and that's, pretty accurate, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, for the for the most part, that's right. accurate. We have a pretty good idea based on historic precedent and what's going on on the day, on the temperature, on the time of what's going to happen. Now, there's still that great element of variability that we all love. Like, it's not entirely predictable, but we do love providing that data overlay and that intelligence uh, to fans and drivers alike to be able to kind of enrich their experience. Yeah, well, just like in hockey, you're going to say, uh, you know, Sidney Crosby's got an 83% chance of winning the face-off, sometimes he doesn't, yeah. right? So yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still up to the humans to execute. Absolutely. Now, one of the things you showed this morning was something called track pulse, yeah. which I thought was pretty fascinating. So talk about what that is and, and who uses it. Sure, so track pulse is a, a tool that we've recently developed and launched where it's really about supporting commentators um, in, in the box there as they are watching a story unfold and sort of literally and figuratively using data to look around corners and build up these little vignettes of stories that will help them do their job uh, better with lower stress, with maybe higher accuracy, but then also to be able to provide kind of a a few different options of stories that they believe are going to be unfolding so that they can swiftly address them, create and craft the graphics, have them pop up on screen um, dynamically. So think about that one more as decision support you know, for the commentator team and uh, the folks who are the announcers in the booth literally on the hot seat. Yeah. Now, if I'm watching a cloud-produced F1 event, which they're all cloud-produced now, as a fan, what are some of the other insights I might see on the broadcast? So you'll see all types of data that's popping up into you know into your TV onto the app. We're able to predict what's going to happen with uh, with teams' tire strategies, with their entire um, race portfolio, to be able to say, oh, this indeed is probably the best scenario you're able to pull given the conditions that we are, that are known, and then the other elements that are that are unknown. Yeah, and what I like about what you're doing with that is, let's face it, not everybody watching here is an F1 fan, and actually. Yeah. You know, there's more and more going every year, um, and I think it was uh, Scott Gutterman from PGA Tour that, when we were talking about AI, said to me what, from his view, what AI does that lets the untrained eye see what the trained eye does. So if you're watching this, you talk about the tire strategy. A yeah. seasoned F1 fan might understand why that's important. Your casual fan might go tires and tires. Yeah, exactly. Right? But now you can actually show with some yeah. rel relative accuracy if they use this tire, this could happen, and some of the outcomes. Yep which actually really helps bring that knowledge level up of that casual fan. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So we find that, you know, the more those fans know, um, the more they enjoy it, yeah. and the more they engage, and the deeper they engage. We well, have to and, understand. Absolutely. And we are encroaching uh, a billion fans globally. That means like roughly one in eight people like yeah. have a love or affinity towards Formula One, which is remarkable. But that also means that we it's not just your old school institutional fans who went as kids. These are new fans since the advent of Drive to Survive, et cetera. There's tons of eyeballs and interest since the tremendous amount of partnerships, like, and even the personalities of the drivers um, since the transition to Liberty Media. There's so much beautiful access to all that storytelling, and, and really everyone is enjoying it. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the IT Pro. So, obviously, a lot of the stuff you do with the leagues are for the league, yeah. for the teams, for the fans. 
but you're actually built some stuff for the IT pro here as well. Absolutely. So Didn't we forget about that. <laughs> right. So we worked on a, a great application that's focused on called root cause analysis and really helping us to kind of uh, understand really what is the origin of issues that the IT and broadcast teams are encountering, you know, on site during a race and able to really accelerate the meantime to resolution by having comprehensive knowledge bases, um, SOPs, repair frequencies, et cetera, all together inside of a chatbot interface that actually helps them do their job significantly faster. So is my AI assistant. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, you think about it uh, with some of the sustainability goals that F1 is working towards. What this means is, you know, you can have a handful of experts on sites, but that you have all of that institutional knowledge in the palm of many of those engineers. Now, whether that's something they're going to fix today, right now, or really address as more systemic change, or look at it holistically across the season and understand the ticketing, Great insights can be derived from the usage of those tools um, as well, but but really, you know, we just want to make sure the broadcast runs smoothly and yeah. fans are able to engage as they like. And I guess as Peter Parker's uncle said, with great insights comes great responsibility. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I heard that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, one of the more fascinating projects that you worked on with F1 was that they used AWS to redesign the car last year. And yeah. this is no small feat. Absolutely. Right, so explain that process and what that what were some of the results of that? Yeah, so because I mean the car, like it's, it's everything. It's here. remarkable. Yeah. So you know, every couple of years there's going to be a, a standards change that requires a redesign of the car. And so for 2022, they had released new standards, and they really wanted to better understand how the cars were going to act and interact together through what's called CFD modeling, computational fluid dynamics, which is essentially a virtualized wind tunnel. So yeah. instead of needing a physical space with only only one physical car that they can mine and monitor what's happening. Uh, they were able to provide virtual simulations of two cars, better understand the aerodynamic wake behind those cars, help um, aid in the adjustment of the unique design um, choices that are based on the standards to be able to have those cars race as close as possible and be as safe as possible. So not only is it interesting to fans, but by using kind of that high powered compute, we're able to run millions of parallel cluster simulations to say this is indeed the best choice and, and here's why. So we're really excited to see um, how the 2026 car redesign unfolds um, accordingly, but very proud of our of our efforts uh, on the 2021. And the re one. results you showed, it's actually pretty uh, remarkable because that whole wake then that used to create airflow and affect the car behind them now goes up and up and out yeah exactly. up and out, yeah and so and it's safer for everyone too it's it's actually my favorite like business level kpi for something like that we've had 30 percent more overtakes since 2022 yeah which means it's more interesting to watch yeah. it's more fun to drive and you know there's less interference by by things that you can and can't see well no one wants to see the guy run the pole and then when nobody passes <laughs> exactly right? so, yeah, yeah cool that's that's called a parade yeah. Yeah. okay kaylee so uh thanks for the discussion one last question uh, you know, it's uh, today's Friday. The race is coming up. Any predictions on who's going to win this one? Ooh, this is hard. This is hard. So I'm super proud of our McLaren friends for locking up the constructors' championship. I'm going to say I am looking out for uh, Max, and then I'm also always a lifelong Lewis fan. So I hope that uh, I hope that the Ferrari gods uh, are kind to him yeah, as well. Well, I was here last year, and I saw Lando have the lead almost to the very end. And then, uh, in fact, you were showing some of the data this morning that showed exactly when he made his mistake, yeah. when Verstappen passed him, yep. what caused him to lose the race, and I think he closes it out this year. Yeah, absolutely. So. You know, uh, endurance racing like this is really about consistency over time, and yeah. it's those last minute, um, those last minute decisions that either are going to make or break it for yeah. them. So. And congrats to McLaren. I guess right? they've wrapped it up. It's pretty early now. It, it, it is. It yeah. is absolutely. So. But the season is not over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, just uh, thanks so much for your time and really excited to uh, see how the rest of the season goes. Yeah, well, uh, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, fascinating stuff you're doing in the world of sports, not just with F1, but with all the leagues you work with. And I think it's, it's fair to say that AWS has made the fan experience much better because wow. I certainly enjoy the game's broadcast on Prime more than anyone in a regular wow. TV broadcast. So, Love it. Well, yeah. thanks so much. So, I appreciate all it. All right, so on behalf of Kaylee Siegel, I'm C.S. Caraval from ZGA. We certainly say thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and also hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast. Thanks, Kaylee.